I think we're all pretty much familiar with Retrobrite. You know, you got some yellowed plastic, you want it to not be yellowed anymore, so you put it in some hydrogen peroxide, mix in some UV light and or heat, different methods for doing it. But however you do it, yeah, go from really nasty yellowed looking plastic to brand new shiny white plastic. Or if it's a colored plastic, it returns it usually back to its original color. That all sounds great, and honestly it is. It's really not that hard of a process. Like, I've done it before with, like, very commonly accessible household items. And it is, it's pretty easy. And I did it in, like, a couple of days. But I was kind of looking into some of this, and I saw that there was a different method that some people talked about called sun brighting. As the name implies, this involves sunlight, which Retrobrite already does, typically. You don't need the sun, but usually it's the best and fastest way to do it. But supposedly with sun brighting, all you need is the sun. You don't need any other ingredients, no chemicals like hydrogen peroxide, no container to have to put this stuff in or like wrapping it in hydrogen peroxide cream, none of that. You just stick it out in the sun and that removes the yellowing. So the very thing that caused it to yellow in the first place, unless it was yellowed by heat, but most plastics yellow because of UV light, at least in my experience, that's supposed to remove the yellowing with no help from any chemicals or anything. Yeah, I, I was a little bit skeptical and I kind of still am. So I decided to run a little experiment just to see, does sunbrighting actually work? Because it just, it sounds too good to be true. I mean, if it works like retrobrighting, why isn't everyone doing it? Is it that it's really slow? Does it not produce good results? Does it not work at all? What's the deal with it? Why don't more people seem to do it then? Everyone still talks about retrobrighting. So I put out a little test piece outside for a few days in direct sunlight and it did initially seem to have lightened it up a bit after about three or four days outside. And I had taped over a little piece with electrical tape just to see if it really changed. And it did seem to maybe adjust it a few shades back up in terms of brightness and kind of remove the yellowing. So I thought, okay, well maybe it just needs a long time. Why don't I do a full-on experiment and make a little video out of this, just kind of documenting it and sharing my thoughts on it. So I grabbed the worst case that I own. Now when I mean worst case, I don't think I'm exaggerating with that necessarily. It was really dirty. I just never cleaned this thing. I buried it way in the back behind a bunch of stuff like years ago completely just forgot and ignored it. It's just not a very good case. It's kind of cheap construction. The front panel's fairly cheap and it doesn't feel that good. And yeah, I just, I've never used it for anything. I just gutted it for the parts that it had in it and just buried it in the back of my garage. Now the thing with this case was that it had very, very bad yellowing on the front panel. So this should be an excellent uh, case to use to test out sunbrighting. After all, it was kind of the worst yellowed thing I think I own. I don't think I own anything else that's quite that bad. And thankfully, it also had a very worn down sticker that I was able to peel off and actually reveal the case's original color. So this would be a good test to see how close can it return it back to the mostly original color. I assume what's under the sticker is the original color because it was very noticeable. But yeah, I figured this is an excellent test piece to use for this. I'm gonna go check it outside. And uh, it's been over two weeks. I put this out on October 1st. This is October 18th that I'm recording this. And uh, I don't know how good it's showing up on camera. I'll put up some B-roll. Well, it's kind of disappointing to be completely honest. I mean, this thing was outside for over two weeks and this is all that it could do, really? That seems kind of, that's kind of lame. And this was in direct sunlight too. All of the days were sunny. Uh, there was only one day where it was kind of overcast, but it definitely had over two weeks of direct sunlight with no real impairment. Yes, it is becoming autumn, so the days are getting a little bit shorter due to the way my backyard is. 
I would say maybe the front panel only got about eight or so hours of direct sunlight. So I'm sure that probably had a bit of an impact, but still over eight hours a day of direct sunlight for two weeks and this is all that it could do. Yeah, I I don't know if I'm ever gonna be doing this again because it kind of seems sort of like a waste of time. When I started this, I was rotating the panel, you know, 90 degrees every day just to make sure that the sides and everything were getting hit evenly. It didn't really seem to make a big difference, so I kind of stopped, I think, after like the fifth day. And honestly, I don't, I don't think it mattered at all. Now, I will give it credit. It's definitely not as yellowed as it was originally. Like, even not knowing, like, even though I haven't seen the original with my own eyes in over two weeks, I can still tell that this is somewhat less yellowed. Somewhat. Not much, but somewhat. I will say, in the first few days, up through like day five or six, it did seem to be noticeably getting a little bit lighter. It seemed like the shade of yellow was kind of uh, lessening in a way, and kind of getting more white, kind of shifting it more towards white. Probably not all too dissimilar to the way that retrobriting does. So I thought, okay, well this is good results. I mean, it was out there at this point, it was out there longer than my original test piece, and I thought, okay, well, it's making progress like the other one did. Well, I'll just keep leaving it out there, and you know, surely it'll keep working. The problem is, is I really just did not notice a difference after the first week. Like, it just seemed to not change whatsoever past the first week. I don't really know what happened. I guess it just stops working after a certain point? Yeah, I, I have a lot of doubts about this process, to say the least, and I, I kind of see why. Nobody really does this. So I figured I'd give some pros and cons that I see with this method, in case you are considering it, and just stuff to keep in mind. Uh, as for pros, uh, well, the first one is that it's free. You don't have to buy anything for this. All you need is access to the sun, which, well, I guess depending on where you live, that might not be so easy. But for most of the world, you have access to the sun at least a few times a week. So the free aspect is certainly nice and welcome. The other thing is that you don't have to totally disassemble whatever it is you're trying to retrobrite to do this. Now, I don't think I would recommend putting out an entire system, especially since you're going to be leaving it out there for many, many days. Like, I would not put out an entire, like, computer, like the motherboard and everything that's still in there. I wouldn't put that outside, one, just for fear of it raining. I mean, I live in the desert, so rain's hardly ever a concern for me, but still, I still wouldn't do this even in the desert. You know, just wind, dust, dirt is gonna find its way into the system. You don't wanna have to clean that out. And uh, bugs are definitely gonna try to make their way into the system. I mean, to them, it's a new home, so you're gonna have to deal with bugs, probably. In fact, when I went out and got this piece yesterday, uh, there was a little spider that had taken up home in one of these grooves in the back. So yeah, I definitely wouldn't put out an entire system, but you could leave like metal components and stuff like wires still attached. Like, I didn't take these front panel buttons and LED wires off because I don't need to. I didn't take out the buttons or anything. This is all stuff you would need to do if you were retrobriting because retrobriting uses hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide does not agree with a lot of metals, iron and steel being particularly uh, well affected. I don't know if it affects copper, it might, I don't know, but it definitely affects steel. So if there's like metal RF shielding on something, in theory you don't have to remove that, which is definitely nice because sometimes they're just, you know, melted onto the plastic using the plastic itself and you kind of got to destroy it to get it off and it's messy trying to get it back on, so that is certainly nice. I kind of think that's where the pros end. Cons. The result. I know it probably looks brighter on camera than it actually is, uh, but trust me, this is still kind of gross looking in person, especially with this very obvious spot where that sticker was. The other con is just, it takes so long. Retrobriting is usually done within two days, maybe three if it was really badly yellowed. This thing would have been done within three days, I guarantee it. It would have been probably whiter than it originally was from the factory, which is 
potentially a negative. Other cons? I don't know what this would do to colored plastic. I don't know if the sun would actually revert it back to its original color. Bread bin Commodore 64s. Those are supposed to be gray. As they yellow, they typically turn more of a brown color. And doing normal retro brighting, it will actually turn it back into its gray color, unless you do it for too long, and then it kinda does start to strip the gray out of it. But you know, usually it turns colored plastics back to their original color, in most cases. I would be kind of hesitant to do this with colored plastic because I just, I feel like the sun would just strip all of the color out of it. Obviously not all of it, but it would strip some of the color away, and I think you would just end up with a really faded looking piece of plastic, especially if you left it out there longer than I did with this piece. Yeah, you might actually ruin it. If you see other plastic that's left outside before that once was colored, uh, usually a lot of the time it gets the color stripped out of it if it's out there for like months. I don't actually have any examples, but I, I've know, I know I've seen it happen before, and I'm sure other people have probably seen that uh, phenomenon too. So yeah, I would definitely be careful with colored plastics. And the other potential con that I see of this is we don't know what the long-term effects of this is going to be on the plastic. This thing could, like, in maybe a year or two, be very badly yellowed. There could be some sort of delay effect, and it just make it makes it even worse than it was originally. Or it could make the plastic more brittle. You know, it could be drying the plastic out or something. I mean, not that there's really moisture in the plastic, but you, you know what I mean. It, it could harm, you know, the chemical makeup of the plastic and degrade it make it more brittle, or it could ruin the texture, potentially. There's a lot that I think could go wrong with this. There's a lot that can go wrong with retro brighting as well. That's why you always should do it with caution. But I think retro brighting is typically foolproof at this point. There's tons of tutorials on how to do it and do it easily. Do it with minimal risk to your retro plastics. With that said, I think this is probably just more risky because we don't know. I, I haven't really seen a whole lot of people actually test this out. I've just seen people talk about it. You try to look up sun brighting on YouTube, there's really not a lot of results. There's a few, but not really a lot. And well, here's another one for you, if you find this one. And I guess kind of my final thought is I don't think I'm ever gonna do this again, um, unless it's really badly yellowed. I don't urgently need it, and I just want to remove at least a little bit of the yellowing, maybe. But here's the thing, is like, retro brighting is not expensive. It's not difficult. Honestly, the most difficult part about it is having some sort of container to actually, you know, be able to submerge your piece in, as that's the re method I would recommend. I think the cream method is too risky, and honestly, I don't know why people still do it because I've seen way more accidents happen with that in like streaking and unevenness. I don't know why people still do that method, but they do. I think submerging the piece is way better, a lot safer. There's also a method that involves just uh, placing it near hydrogen peroxide in a sealed container. And as it heats up, the peroxide vapors de-yellow the plastic. You could also do that. And yeah, and I don't even know if you need a clear container to do this in. I mean, that's what I did, and I got great results out of it. You know, I just had an old, big, clear storage bin that was missing the lid, and I just covered the top with plastic wrap, and that worked fantastically. But you might not even need a transparent container to put it in. I mean, retrobriting can work with just heat, so as long as it kind of heats the water up, the sun does, or however you're doing it, and you get some sunlight in there, you're probably fine. And you also don't need the really special high strength hydrogen peroxide. Like you don't need the hair stuff that's like, actually I don't know how high a percentage it is. It's probably over like six or 8%. It'll definitely work faster. No doubt about that. It's going to work faster. How I did my retrobriding on my 386 case, that thing was pretty badly yellowed too. I don't know if it was quite as bad as this, but it was still pretty bad. I just used regular 3% store-bought hydrogen peroxide, and I think at the time they were like a dollar a bottle. Probably not a dollar a bottle anymore, but I... We'll look it up. Dang, I'm gonna go buy some of that before the price goes up. Still a pretty good deal, and I only think I used maybe two or three of those bottles uh, just poured right into the bottom of the container. I weighed my piece down with some sacrificial bolts 
uh, just kind of tied to the back in an area that didn't matter. You definitely want to weigh it down with something you don't care about because if it's metal, like I said, it's going to corrode them really badly. Then I just filled it up with just tap water until it was barely covering the uh, till it was barely covering the plastic, and it was done within three days. It's bright white. It still is. I did that over a year ago, and it still looks fantastic. And that cost me the container I got was free. You know, I was I just got that for junk because it was missing the lid. Nobody nobody wanted it. I spent maybe like three bucks on the peroxide. Less than five dollars, and I got a fantastic result out of it. So yeah, I kind of think this is pointless unless you really just don't want to deal with the hassle of retrobriting, which really isn't that hard to do. It's it's a disappointment in my opinion. I don't recommend it. Just do regular retrobriting. You can use the store-bought hydrogen peroxide. It just takes a little bit longer. That's it. Now, am I gonna properly retrobrite this? No. I don't care about this case. This is junk anyways. It's like nasty. I don't want to clean up the rest of the case. It's getting buried back in the back of the garage. I'm never using that thing. I, I hate these buttons. Ugh. They're so... Ugh. Yeah, no, I don't like this case. It was a good test subject. Not a good case. See you in the next video.